Welcome to the Bridgewater Hall, I'm Jonathan Scott and in this short film we'll be exploring the Bridgewater Hall organ and going behind the scenes to see how it works. The organ was commissioned by Manchester City Council to be built by the Danish firm of Markerson & Son, who have been building organs since 1806. Design work for the organ began in 1992, and early sketches were carefully revised until a design was approved by the hall's architects and consultants. The entire organ was built in Markerson's workshop in Denmark, before being shipped piece by piece to the UK, where it was reconstructed in the hall. The organ is housed in a three-storey concrete chamber and contains five and a half thousand pipes, weighs 22 tonnes and stands over 12 metres high and 13 metres wide. From the earliest examples, over 2,000 years ago, the pipe organ still works on the same principles, with air being blown through pipes to create sound. Pipes come in many shapes and sizes. In this organ, the smallest are just a few inches long and play the highest notes. The largest pipes are a massive 32 feet long, and these play the very lowest notes. There are essentially two types of pipe, flue pipes and reed pipes. In a flue pipe, air under pressure enters through a small hole and is forced through a small gap between the languid and the mouth of the pipe. This air strikes the top lip and then oscillates through the body of the pipe. In a reed pipe, the air enters what is called the boot of the pipe and travels over a small brass tongue which vibrates against a block called a shallot. The air then travels into a resonator which amplifies the sound. The pipes play in basically the same way as a whistle. So the wooden pipes, such as this, have a very fluty sound. And if we find the same sound in the organ. Also, the metal pipes have a much more bright and direct sound like this. And the same sound in the organ. So you can see that whatever the pipe is made of, whether it's wood or metal, it gives the pipe its own character and distinctive sound. There are many variations of pipe which create many different types of sound and all of these can combine together just like an orchestra. Each of the five and a half thousand pipes of the Bridgewater Hall organ have to be carefully maintained and tuned. This is the responsibility of organ builder David Wood. Well, I'm David Wood. I look after the organ in the Bridgewater Hall. I've looked after the organ since it was new and I tune it every time there's a major use of the organ, be it orchestrally or for solo recitals, and have done so for 15 years. To tune pipes here, we use different methods of tuning. The front pipes here, the larger ones, have a tuning scroll cut into the pipe here, which is rolled down so that we can roll it slightly back up or slightly back down to make it flatter or sharper. The longer the pipe, the flatter the note. The pipes in front of it you can see have slightly rounded ends and we use a tuning cone to tune these pipes to either cut the top of the pipe over or flare the top out. The pipes in front of me here are the 8 foot gedact and we tune these pipes at the ears I'll take one out. they have very soft enlarged ears that we can move in or out to shade the mouth to make it slightly flatter or bring out to make it slightly sharper Dirt can sometimes affect the sound of pipes, especially the reed pipes, and these need to be cleaned. The reed pipes are tuned by a reed knife, which is used to move a spring which changes the length of the reed and alters the pitch. The pipes need air to make sound, and this is supplied by a blower, which fills a central reservoir to pressurise air. This air is then fed through a trunk into a wind chest beneath the pipes. We're in the bottom of the organ now, and this is where everything starts when we switch the organ on. In his cupboard is the organ blower, which is really a fan on a motor which draws air in through this felted intake and sends it out into the organ 
in these huge wooden ducts where it's stored, ready to go into the pipes. Let me switch it on, Jonathan. We keep the blower in this substantial, thick, soundproof box so that we can't hear it in the hall. Because this organ is mechanical, each note of the keyboard is attached to a length of wood called a tracker. Each tracker is attached to a pallet, and when a key is pressed down, the tracker pulls the pallet down, allowing air from the Winchester into the pipes above. Since trackers are made of wood, they can only travel in straight lines, and so there is a complex mechanism of corner pieces and roller boards to allow the action to travel large distances and even around corners. To control which pipes are played, stops are drawn. These control sliders, which are long pieces of wood which lie between the pipes and the pallets. Each slider has holes in it which correspond to the bottom of each pipe. When a stop is pulled out, the slider is pulled sideways, allowing air into the pipe when a key is pressed. When a stop is pushed in, it moves the slider back, stopping the air, hence the name Stop. This instrument has four keyboards and a big keyboard on the floor which is a pedal board which is played by the feet. The four keyboards relate to divisions of the organ. The top is the solo, the swell, the great, the positive and of course the pedals on the floor. They all operate different sounds and different ranks of stops. For example, if I'd like to have a trumpet on the top manual, I draw a trumpet stop. I can have a flute on the great manual. Each division is placed in a different part of the organ. The swell is at the very top. The next level down has the grate and solo, the positive and pedal, and on the very bottom level are the big pipes of the pedal organ. The thing about the organ which makes it different from a piano is that instead of having a normal pitch, the pipes can go octaves higher, lower and have different sounds. So for example, an 8 foot flute would be at normal pitch just like a piano. If I wanted the octave higher, I draw a 4 foot, 2 foot is an octave higher, then we have trumpets. And so we can combine them all together to create a general organ sound. In performance there's not often time to get the hands from the keyboard and pull out stops. So we have these buttons which are controlled by a computer which has displays at the top. I can set these buttons to bring out different sounds on different keyboards. So for example, if I hold the top keyboard down, I can then add stops without taking my hands off the keyboard. There are also toe pistons which control the sounds in the same way. This organ is also fitted with a roll schreller or crescendo wheel which allows me to add stops by just turning the wheel around so I don't have to take any hands off the keyboards at all. So if I play a chord and turn the wheel I can go from nothing to full organ with a very simple device with one foot. In addition to adding and taking away stops to change the sound and the volume of the instrument, we also have two swell boxes on this organ which house the two top keyboard sets of pipes. These are big boxes with shutters on the front which are controlled by the two pedals at the console. So the top manual for example, if I play a chord and open the box and then close it, I now have control over the expression of the sounds I'm playing on. The Bridgewater Hall organ also has a second mobile console, which electronically operates the entire organ from the stage. This is done through an optic fibre cable, which relays information from a computer to magnets, which move the mechanical action electronically. This console is designed to match the stage, and is excellent for solo recitals, as the performer can hear the sound from the stage, and the audience enjoys a closer view of the player and instead of traditional draw stops, it has tabs to control the sounds. One of the unique aspects of the organ is the fact that the player uses both hands and feet, often at the same time. In addition, we also need to change stops, either by hand or with pistons, as well as operating the swell boxes to control the volume of certain sounds. The keyboards, or manuals, are played by the hands, just like any other keyboard instrument. The feet use toes and heels to play the 32 notes of the pedals. All of this often happens at the same time, making the organ one of the most complicated musical instruments to play, and it requires a huge amount of coordination. 
The music we play from is all written in the same way on three lines. The top line is for the right hand, the next line down is for the left hand, and the bottom line is for the feet. Here's an example of how this all works. In this piece, I begin with my right hand. Then add my left hand. And finally, join in with the feet. The music can also include indications of how loud to play and what types of sound to use. With its vast array of sounds, colours and volumes, the organ can be as exciting as a full orchestra, even though it's all controlled by one person. It's always a thrilling experience to play this wonderful instrument and hear how the sound fills this amazing concert hall, but the best way to experience the Bridgewater Hall organ is in real life. If you'd like to find out more about the organ, then take a look at the Bridgewater Hall website to see what's coming up. You can hear the organ at regular recitals, or join an organ tour to go inside the instrument and see everything close up for yourself. We hope that you have enjoyed this short tour of the instrument and look forward to welcoming you to organ events at the Bridgewater Hall.